Well, hello everyone, hello. Multicasa is providing Master Clock, which I'm sending to Divide and Conquer. Little Nerd A160-2 Clock Divider set to prime numbers. And Sequence 8. Actually, Sequence 8 is getting divided by 2 from up here. Um, so yes, the sequence from Sequence 8 is going over here to Vector Space. Um, at gate number 1 of Sequence 8 is clocking Clip Diaz, and the bipolar output is going into Vector Space. One of these clock divisions up here is firing pip slope and rings. The output from pip slope is going into vector space, and I'm using the center output to control the pitch of the life forms SV1 and the across from the white LED, the I don't know what they call it, but it's the opposite of the center input offset by five volts and that's controlling the pitch of rings not that you can really tell but rings is clanging occasionally you can hear multicasa you can also hear the e950 talking and that's being triggered by this divide by 17 going through mutable branches using some probability to depopulate that so that it it fires less often and I'm sending a copy of that trigger to the 4R to generate a random voltage to select each word life forms as I said the pitch is being controlled by the center of vector space and you heard that tone just then, so I will mention uh, Microburst, my standard go-to effect for delay and reverb. The position of Microburst is being controlled by vector space. And then one of these clock divisions is occasionally freezing the buffer. But to get back to this, Lifeform's envelope is being triggered by a little nerd Euclidean pattern. And there it is. Then I'm sending the sine wave from that oscillator up here into Dresno which the, the link buttons are lit, which means Yena is processing that signal. I've got a vector space CV controlling shape. You can see the numbers moving. Look at them, dancing around. Um, the output from there is going through one side of streams. That's being triggered by an X or combination of two of these prime divisions. Gives a little brighter, occasionally brighter sound. Plucky sound. Then I have the sub oscillator 2, the lowest one, coming from SV1. That's going through the other side of streams. That's being triggered by another XOR combination. And that's very similar to the Yena trigger pattern. Because the way the triple XOR module works, the output from the top one is normaled to input A of the next one, and then that one's output would be normal to the, the next one. And so you, you can take this top output and then just XOR it with another trigger and you get a slight, a slight variation. At this point, I decided that uh, Microburst wasn't slushy enough in terms of delay. So I have the crush delay 
chewing on a copy of the SV1 output and its time parameter being controlled by CV from vector space. If I turn that up over here, we get some extra little nasty little echoes. cluster so there's plats going through one of these envelopes of the A142-2 and I will be playing it using the Keith McMillan Q Nexus this is kind of a mysterious controller I very often see people using an arteria key step but I hardly ever see anybody playing a Q-Nexus and I just I wonder why because it's it's really small it's really flat it, it fits perfectly in this space and it's expressive you've got pressure you've got tilt there's gate and pitch and then there are two additional CV outputs and you can de determine what they do. There's a editor software that you download that you use to configure this thing. And I have pressure mapped to timbre up there. And tilt is plugged into the FM socket to slightly alter the pitch. I think I might know why you don't see a lot of people using the Q-Nexus. Uh, the, the tilt is really finicky and it seems like sometimes it gets stuck or doesn't want to register. I spent quite a bit of time messing with the editor software to get this thing configured to my taste. Uh, the, the pressure seems to work reasonably well. The tilt uh, it strikes me as being very unreliable. However, it, it, it still is useful and I like that it, it fits here. So it's, it's really what I needed. And um, I'll just find some way to work around, maybe just not rely on the tilt feature. But there's that, and there's this crazy patch. I hope you enjoyed it, 
and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.